former secretaries of state who worked extensively with the British Prime Minister. George Shultz served under President Ronald Reagan. James Baker served as Secretary of State under President George H.W. Bush. We welcome you both to the news hour. And Secretary Schultz, let me begin with you. You were uh, in that position for seven years under Ronald Reagan. So you work with her as much as, if not more than anyone else uh, in government at that time. What was she like? She was uh, very clear, very well informed. She was, uh, loved to have a good discussion. She didn't like it if you toadied to her. She liked it when you stood up and argued. And so that's what I did. Your interview clip with uh, McNeil and Lair reminded me of a time when she had been in Camp David and I flew down with her to Andrews Air Force Base to see her off. And at the base there was a news interview. And she stood there and the reporters would ask these questions and she would say, now that's not a very good question. If you had formulated it like this, then that would be something of a question worth answering. And here's the answer to the question you should have asked. She did that a few times and then there weren't any more questions. Well, Secretary Baker, uh, you, of course, not only interacted with her uh, in the first, Bu first Bush administration as Secretary of State, you, of course, were also White House Chief of Staff, Treasury Secretary under President Reagan. So you interacted with her in several different capacities. What, what do you remember about her? Well, I remember uh, how strong and determined a leader she was. Uh, I remember uh, what a great friend of, uh, of the United States she was. Uh, I remember how she, in effect, led a, a conservative revolution in a number of countries by being elected uh, in 1979 in the United Kingdom, just before Ronald Reagan was elected in 1980 in America. And, uh, and you had the election of conservative leaders in Germany with Helmut Kohl and Canada with Brian Mulroney. Uh, shortly thereafter or contemporaneously therewith and and so it was a it was a quite a, uh, a quite a conservative revolution uh, in governments around the world uh, I agree with what George said she uh, she 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 really didn't mind it at all if you uh, argued with her if you uh, engaged or jousted with her uh, <clears throat> on policy and we did that. We had to do that as well from time to time. I never will forget an instance uh, in the Oval Office uh, when when uh, we were trying to convince her that we uh, should go to the United Nations to get a resolution of force uh, auth authorizing the ejection of Iraq from Kuwait. We didn't have the support of the Congress. We had a Democratic House and Democratic Senate. And it was our view that if we got the rest of the world behind this effort, we could then get the American Congress, which proved to be the case. But she didn't want to go to the U.N. because she was afraid that we might go for the resolution and not get it. Of course, our plan was never to bring it up unless we knew we had the votes to get it. But I never will forget her sitting, sitting there after 45 minutes of, of discussing this issue. She turned to President Bush and she said, oh, George, she said, let's just go do it. Well, uh, I can understand that. Her, her view was that Article 51 of the U.N. Charter gave us the authority, and it probably did, but we needed the political support, and we wanted to have uh, and, and were able ultimately to achieve that unprecedented international coalition to kick Iraq out of Kuwait. Secretary Schultz, what was she like in those situations? What was she like as a as a partner, uh, as someone who I assume the administration agreed with much of the time, but maybe not all the time? Well, she was a person with whom you could really discuss a subject in depth because she had done her homework. She thought about the things that we were interested in. And so you always could learn something from talking with her. And you could see that her mind was open to learning whatever you had to say. Every time I went to the Soviet Union, I shared with her directly what impressions I had. And whenever she had any contacts, she let us know right away what her observations were. So she was uh, really an excellent partner.
But she could also give you what for. I remember when the big Reagan-Gorbachev meeting in Reykjavik uh, took place. At that meeting, we talked about the possibility of a world free of nuclear weapons. And I had hardly gotten back to Washington that I was summoned to the British ambassador's residence, practically summoned to meet with Margaret. And you remember she used to carry a little handbag? Well, I learned that there is a verb in the British language called to be handbagged. <laughs> she said, George, how could you sit there and allow the president to talk about a world free of nuclear weapons? I said, but Margaret, he's the president. Yes, but you're supposed to be the one with his feet on the ground. But Margaret, I agreed with him. Vroom, boy, did I get it. <laughs> But uh, she had very clear views, and she made them known to you. <laughs> Secretary Baker, what was her influence on President Reagan and on President, the first President Bush? To what extent did she make it easier, especially for President Reagan, to deal with the Soviets, to, to open the end of the well, Cold she War? Made it, I think she made it much easier with both pres, uh, for both President Reagan and President Bush to do so by early on uh, commenting, you know, that uh, after she met with Gorbachev, she said, you know, this is somebody that I think we can do business with. Well, that made it a lot easier for a Republican president uh, to engage with the Soviet Union, something that the, uh, that the very conservative base of the Republican Party was, was not enthusiastic about. But if you had the, uh, if you had the Iron Lady saying, this is uh, someone we can do business with. It made it a lot easier for both of those presidents uh, to engage. But, you know, uh, we've mentioned a couple of instances where, where there were uh, minor disagreements. For the most part, everything was pretty much seamless between uh, uh, Prime Minister Thatcher and both of those presidents, so Reagan and Bush. Uh, I do remember one occasion, George will remember this, when we were about to invade Grenada, First time the uh, United States had used force since the Vietnam War, military force. And we, uh, therefore, were, were uh, holding it pretty close. We called the prime minister the night before the operation was to go down. And I was on the phone taking notes while President Reagan talked to her. He told her that tomorrow morning we're going to invade Grenada. Well, that was a Commonwealth country. And she thought we should have <laughs> called her while we were developing the plans, not after they were in train, in effect. And she said, she said, Ronnie, this is, this is notification, not consultation. And she was not a happy camper. But, but that just shows you, I think, that she was, for the most part, and in most instances, she was 100 percent with the United States on practically every issue. Secretary Schultz, how much did it matter that she was a woman? Well, you do. You weren't. She was a very attractive woman, so you were certainly aware of that. But it didn't. Uh, you didn't sort of feel I'm dealing with a woman, and there's something special about it. She was just a straightforward uh, person. But I'd like to make a comment on the attitude toward the Soviets. She and Ronald Reagan shared something that was not widely shared, but made a big difference. They were both very tough-minded, but, but they both thought that if you kept the pressure on long enough, change would come to the Soviet Union. That's the underlying significance of the remark Jim quoted on uh, Gorbachev as somebody we can do business with, that you didn't just sit there and assume nothing could ever change. You sat there and you had a hard line but at the same time, when we saw the opportunity to uh, develop change, we seized it. And as Jim indicated, that was not the view of a lot of conservative people, but the view that change could come turned out to be right. And she and Ronald Reagan shared that view. And so, and so uh, Secretary Baker, how much of that was, was her legacy? The leg what is the legacy that she leaves? Well, I think she, uh, I, I really think it's not a stretch to say that she changed the arc of history. Uh, she certainly did as far as the U.K. is concerned. And, and I think working with President Reagan and working with uh, President Bush 41, 
he changed uh, the arc of history as far as the world w is concerned. I mean, you think about the developments that took place during that, uh, uh, I guess, 10-year uh, period. She came in in 79. She left in 90, uh, 11 years. Uh, look at the change that took place. Uh, it, it was fundamental change in many, many uh, uh, with respect to many things around the world. And so I don't think it's a stretch to say that she changed the arc of history. How I had the privilege of dealing with her not, not only in, uh, in, in, dipl in diplomatic and political matters, uh, international political matters, but also economic matters because I was Treasury Secretary for almost four years while she was Prime Minister, and I dealt with her in that capacity. And, of course, she left a legacy there as well, particularly in the U.K., where she... She uh, uh, emphasized uh, the private sector and, and got rid of the oppressive uh, uh, influence of the uh, trade unions. And Secretary Schultz, that was a controversial part of her legacy. How much did that affect how you were able to deal with her? How did that affect her, what, the, 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 the criticism she was facing at home? She didn't seem to be uh, bothered by it. And of course, the ultimate test is she got reelected. So if you win, uh, maybe people are criticizing you, but you have the, have the majority with you. And I agree with Jim wholeheartedly that she changed the arc. She, with Ronald Reagan together, changed the arc of history. And I would put it in one word, freedom. That was her tagline, freedom. Freedom at home for markets to work freedom abroad for countries to find their way and to have respectable, responsible elected governments. Well, we are so pleased to have both of you join us this evening, former Secretaries of State George Schultz and Jim Baker. Thank you. Thank you, Judy.